What's up everybody, Kevin Clayson here, and I'm here to change your life. And today, it is fantastic. It is the day of all days because I've got my boy, the one, the only, the cupcake master of everything that is cupcake, cocoa bean cupcakery, my man, Gary Rasmussen. You out there, homie? How's it going? Haha, <laughs> there he is. Dude, okay, so, I, you know, last week, I was at the Cocoa Bean, and you and I have become friends over the last couple years, mostly because I can't get enough of your delicious drinks and cupcakes, and when somebody frequents an establishment as often as my wife and I do, you as the owner almost, I think, feel obligated to say hi and take <laughs> pity on us, and so as a result, we've kind of become friends over the last couple years, right? Right. <laughs> great. Now, you know, dude, here's the thing. The reason why I wanted to have you on, and by the way, thank you so much for doing this. Um, for those of you that maybe are tuning in for the first time, I'm right smack dab in the middle of a 90-day video challenge. I'm calling it uh, the 90-day awesome video challenge. And my entire purpose and intent over these 90 days is to make you laugh, to make you smile, but to give tremendous value and content. And each day has a theme. And Tuesdays, which is today, is tantalizing Tuesdays. And I thought, you know, it kind of came to me that what I ought to do is go to some of the most delicious places that I've ever been, and especially ones where I happen to know the owner or the founder, and then bring them on to tell their story. And Gary, that's why you're here. So let me give everybody a little bit of background of how I came to find you, and then I want to ask you a couple questions about how you've grown your business and, and what made you get into it. So. I had an assistant years ago who had lived in Idaho, and she told me that in Idaho they had the most delicious cupcake place as well as the most delicious cocoa drinks that I'd ever imagined. And she was really excited because this place that she loved from Idaho was moving to a location right next to Brigham Young University. And the establishment was called the Cocoa Bean Cupcake Cafe. And uh, she took me there for the first time because she said, you've got to go. It's so incredible. And I went there, and I, I had never seen such beautiful cupcakes. I'd never tasted such incredible cupcakes in my entire life. It was really my first experience of going to a cupcakery and just being blown away by the flavors and the combinations. It was incredible. And then I discovered, Gary, you guys had these drinks where you did something with cocoa beans and you made these delicious cocoa drinks. It was coffee free, but it smelled like coffee and it was the most rich, in, rich, incredible flavor I'd ever had. And I got a chance to get to know the Cocoa Bean Cupcake Cafe. And I've gone, I don't know how many times, and I tell everybody about this place because Gary, I honestly believe not only do I have a tremendous respect for you as an entrepreneur, for you as a man and you as a person, but you have an incredible product. It really is amazing. And everybody out there, if you live in Utah, you need to come to Provo and go to this man's cupcake shop. You have to. And if you're in Idaho, you've got locations where, Gary, in uh, Rexburg, Rexburg and Idaho Falls? In Idaho Falls. Okay. Yep. If you are in Idaho or driving through Idaho or Utah, you've got to go to this man's establishment because it is incredible. So, um, Gary, uh, have I made you blush yet? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I got to tell you, Gary and I are also part of a very exclusive group. It's called Our Wives Are Way Hotter Than We Deserve. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Absolutely. So we've got that in common <laughs> as well. But, Gary, you know, thank you so much for, for joining us, man, and thanks for being willing to do this. And uh, I, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, tell me the story of why you started – the cocoa bean and and just kind of what was the evolution from everything from the idea to to saying I'm gonna do this to going through the process. I mean, just kind of give us the story of the cocoa bean. Sounds good. Um, I served my mission in California from 2005 to 2007, and while I was there, I served with Samoans for about a year of that uh, mission for my church. And um, while I was there, I was introduced to a drink called Coco Samoa. And what it was is it was um, basically 
cocoa beans that had been roasted, the shells had been shucked, and then they would grind the cocoa bean into like a paste where they would boil it with water and sugar. And it kind of tasted like coffee, which I liked. Um, I've always been a fan of coffee flavors and the smell of coffee and things like that. So I was stoked that I could drink this and know that it was actually chocolate instead of coffee. And so um, when I was on my mission, I had a journal, and on the back of the journal, I would write different ways to make money when I got home from my mission. Love Just it. like random little ideas. I don't know. But I wrote down the cocoa bean. That was actually one of my ideas. And um, when I came home off my mission, you know, it was about a year later or something um, from when I kind of caught the idea while serving on that mission. Um, I came home, and that summer I just worked really hard. Um, I saved all my money, and and I wanted to do something. And I, I've always felt like I've been an entrepreneur at heart, and um, I just wanted to do something different and something fun. Um, so I was sitting in my sister's kitchen with her husband, and I was like, we should open up a shop called The Cocoa Bean and just do gourmet, like hot chocolates, I know this, you know, I, I have connections in California um, with Samoans where they could actually get us cocoa beans from the island of Samoa and we could do like this exotic drink idea, you know, and just have a bunch of different desserts and stuff. And so um, we, we kind of just right there and then decided to do this and um, – Rewind when I was when I was a teenager. I worked for my cousin, and her name was Bonnie Beard, and she actually employed me at her restaurant. And so, from the time I was like in sixth grade to the time I was a senior in high school, I worked for her. And so, to open a shop like this wasn't um, way out of my comfort zone because I've had experience doing um, things in the food world, I guess you could say. And so. Um, we just decided to open up the cocoa bean and to strictly just serve like gourmet hot chocolates, gourmet frozen hot chocolates, and gourmet cupcakes and just stick it with that. And um, from day one it was pretty much a success. We started in Rexburg and uh, we had a really good you know, reception from everyone and, and uh, people seemed to love it and um, business was great and so we decided um, in 2010, I believe, we opened up in Provo, Utah, and uh, it was kind of like, you know, the demographics are very similar. Um, there's just more people, and so we felt like that was like a safe thing to do, and it's been very successful down there. We have a lot of competition down there, but we remain to, you know, be really successful, so we're really grateful for that. You don't have competition. Listen, I no, I I've told you this because I've like texted you or Instagrammed you, and I've been like, "Hey, I feel like I'm cheating on your cupcakes because I tried this cupcake over here." And and Gary, it's interesting because I know of two shops within just a matter of miles of my home that competed on and actually won cupcake wars. And my right. wife and I have said it time and time again: your cupcakes are better than theirs. We absolutely feel that. We absolutely believe it. And that's why for us, you don't have competition. Not to mention, nobody has the drinks like you've got in addition to the cupcakes. And so I know there, it's, you know, there are a lot of shops around here, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, you don't have competition. Here's the other thing, Gary, I got to say. You picked a brilliant location because you're so close to BYU. And pretty much every time I go into the Cocoa Bean, especially in the evenings, there's always a line. It is always full. It is always people are. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. When I go into these other shops, if I go there from time to time, um, I, I don't see that. I really don't. You've got something unique and special, and I think it's because one of the things that I respect about what you did, Gary, is you didn't just say I'm going to do a cupcake. You said I'm going to do gourmet cupcakes, and you've got just some incredible flavors. Uh, and, and combinations, by the way. But what you did too is you said I'm going to add this element of these cocoa drinks and I love that you took something and you began to exploit a niche that nobody really had and right. as a result it's created a lot of 
success for you. And so that right there, I think, really does set you apart from the competition. Um, in fact, I've got whenever we have people that come and visit us from out of town, we take them to the cocoa bean. And whenever they come back in town, they want to go in, and they especially love the drinks, because I don't know of anywhere else in the country, Gary, where somebody can get drinks like that. It's really incredible. You've done something amazing. Yeah, it was it was when we first started. I remember laying in bed the night before we opened, and I was looking at the ceiling, and I was thinking, "What have I done?" You know, just because I I had nothing um, to base our future success off of. There wasn't another cupcake shop in town. There wasn't one within hundreds of miles of us, and I've never even been to a cupcake shop until I started my own. And and like you were saying with the drinks, like that was something that was clearly unheard of. Like no one even heard of roasting cocoa beans and making it into a drink. So we did something that was, you know, really unique and different. And um, I don't know, it's just been it's been successful, and people people really like it. And I think the environment in our stores as well. Is a fun environment. It's it's young and it's an experience, which I like. Well, and it, it, I agree with that. It, it absolutely is, and it always has a really good feel to it. And uh, I'm gonna, you know, when I go back, we're doing a live hangout on Google Plus right now. I'm gonna go back and edit this video and post it on another YouTube channel, and I'm gonna splice in. Um, some shots that I took last week of your shop right here in this section so people can kind of get a feel for what it looks like because it really is. It's, it's super cute uh, and it just feels good. You guys always have like good music on. You have t-shirts that you sell um, that have all these cool little quips and phrases. Uh, I mean it really is. It's just a good feel. You've always, you've always got uh, young people that are working behind the desk that give it kind of a young uh, like hip vibe. Um, it's it's awesome, man. I mean, really, you you you. I think you struck gold with this thing, and uh, I really do think you're the best cupcake shop around. I really do mean that. Let me ask you this, because you know, there's a lot of people. I talk all the time in my videos about we as a country have moved from a place of of self reliance and being entrepreneurs and business owners to a space of saying I'm always going to depend on somebody else for my success. I'm going to go get a corporate job. I'm going to go tr work for a boss that I hate making not enough money at a job that I despise so I can barely scrape by in hopes that one day I get a retirement when I'm too old to enjoy it. I mean that's the general American dream but then there's people like you and, and me and so many others that I'm sure you and I know that are entrepreneurs. And, and I think everybody would love to have a business, would love to start a business. Very few people can do it as successfully as you've done. What do you think, uh, two questions really. Number one, um, what was it about going into business for yourself that was appealing to you? That's the first question. The second question, um, what do you think has really allowed you to succeed uh, since you started the Cocoa Bean? Um. Well, one of my really good examples of entrepreneurship comes from my dad, and I I love his story because he grew up working on a farm for someone else, just like you were talking about, working for someone, helping them be more successful, and at the age of 45, he was like, I've had enough. I don't want to do this anymore, and so at the age of 45, he started a stonemasonry business and it was like a little side project that he was doing where um, in the evenings he would get off work from the farm and then he would um, what he did is he laid like a fireplace in his own home with stone and just made it really beautiful but his friend said hey can you do one for me in my house and he was like sure so he did that you know for him for free and then his friend wanted another one you know so it you know just word of mouth kind of caught on and within a summer's time, he made enough money to um, be completely debt-free, like pay off his home, his land, all of his vehicles, any debt that he had acquired, he paid off in one summertime. And um, so I, I grew up with him being um, self-employed himself and, and having that freedom, I guess, the time freedom where... Um, you know, on Friday, if he wanted to go fishing, he just went fishing. He didn't have to, like, ask permission or get time off or anything like that. So um, 
he's been a really good example to me with entrepreneurship. And then, um, what was your second question, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, it was just what do, what do you think it's been? Uh, you know, when you started the the business, obviously you had a unique thing, but what has allowed you to succeed over the years? What do you think has been the difference maker for the way you've you've grown the business and conducted the business that's allowed you to now own three storefronts, three shops, and have success all across the board? I mean, what do you think it really is? Because listen, I there's good there's good tasting stuff all the time, right. but the businesses fail. I know because right. there's been little restaurants or little places I'm like, oh, it's so good, and I go and you know, two months later they're out of business. So what do you think has been the difference maker for you? I think the first thing is you you need to have something that is different and new and exciting. And like I said previously, um, we didn't have anything to base off our future success off of. I couldn't. It wasn't like opening up another Mexican restaurant, being like, oh well, they do pretty good over here, so we should be able to, you know take some of their competition or some of their clientele and be successful for ourselves. So we didn't have any of that. And so what we did from the beginning is we had a product that was new and exciting. And we also branded ourselves really well. We didn't want to look mom and pop. Like we kind of threw this together in a hurry and didn't think things through. And so our branding is really well. And then um, we systemize everything. So all of our employees, they know what needs to be done. Um, we run a tight ship, and our stores are very clean. That's another thing that, you know, we, it's almost like our own homes. Like, in the kitchens and things like that, we keep things really tidy and clean because that's just how we are as individual people. So um, systemizing everything was super important just so people knew what their roles were while they were at work. And... Um, that helped us also expand because with each new store it became easier and easier because we knew what needed to happen next. So, Man, Gary, I love what you're saying because there's a couple things I always talk about when I talk to the business owner or the aspiring business owner, entrepreneur, solopreneur is A, I always say you've got to have a system because systems increase predictability. Predictability minimizes and mitigates some of the risk that would be associated with going into business. And if you can minimize and mitigate the risk, you have a higher uh, chance for success. And so I always talk about that. The other thing I always talk about is branding. You've got to have a successful brand. You have to have something that your people can remember and they can anchor to. And I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, alliterations and so I like saying the cocoa bean cupcake cafe I like that a lot I think that that actually it, it kind of feels cool it's, it's it's nice to say but you've got this strong brand you've got this system which is everything I talk about I didn't know that you were gonna say that but those are literally two of the most important things I talk about and you also said the other one which for me is so huge and again this is awesome dude because I didn't know you were gonna say this stuff I just knew I wanted to interview you because I love you and I love what you've done, but you said, look, we had nothing to base our success off of. We just went for it. I was being interviewed today for a book that I'm going to be in um, and uh, that, that's coming out like in February, kind of cool. And uh, the guy asked me a similar question. He said, how did you go, talking to me, how did you go from you know, making 30 grand a year working for Wells Fargo to over the last six years uh, founding and creating and being a part of, of building a multi 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 million dollar real estate company um, and that you know has done over two hundred million dollars in residential real estate for our clients and and we've got you know fifty employees on payroll and and we've got a thousand independent marketers and all that he said how did you do it and I said you know what it was real simple I said I took a leap into the great unknown and decided that I wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself and I wanted to provide value for people. And Gary, I just heard you say just that. You took a leap into the great unknown. You provided a product that was not on the market that everybody loves. You did it with a specific brand and you delivered this system that's allowed you to now duplicate you and open up multiple stores, which means now you have multiple profit centers. Plus, I'm sure you begin to tap into some of the beauty of economies of scale and, and being able to order in larger quantities and, and minimize expenses. And, you know, I, man. I, it's it's awesome, dude. You you are an inspiration. I just want you to know that it's really really cool. Thank you, Kevin. 
It's really cool. Thanks. Well, dude, hey, I'm going to let you go because this was great, man. I feel like we delivered exactly what I wanted people to hear, that if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to have an idea, you've got to have a brand, you've got to have a system, and you've got to be willing to go on faith and take a leap. But you've got to have, you have to have something that's powerful that's going to provide value for other people. And uh, once again, Gary, tell everybody – where they can go find you, how can they go and look at the Cocoa Bean, what are your websites, uh, where do you want them to connect with you? All right, um, our website is thecocoabean.net, and there you can see um, pictures of different cupcakes that we have, our cupcake schedule that we have, as well as our different locations and their contact information. We have a store in Rexburg and Idaho Falls, Idaho, and then we have one in Provo, Utah. And we're also on um, Instagram as the Cocoa Bean Cupcake Cafe, as well as Facebook. If you just type in the Cocoa Bean Cupcake Cafe, you'll see us there. So Awesome. And I recommend everybody connect with Gary and the Cocoa Bean. And do what – make a me – you know what? Travel to Mecca. Make your journey. <laughs> do a walkabout. Get your butt to Provo. Get your butt to Rexburg. Get your butt to Idaho Falls. And go enjoy some delicious cocoa bean magic – Magical awesome awesomeness, which is totally a word, by the way, and get a cupcake and get the frosting on your face. Get it up your nostril because it will be worth it. It's awesome. Gary, dude, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being willing to come on. I know that being on video can be uncomfortable. You're fantastic. Your product's fantastic. Your, your company's fantastic. Everything you do is just awesome. You really are an inspiration, and I want everybody out there to, to look at this Think about what Gary's done and use it as a kind of template for how you could be a business owner, be an entrepreneur. And you know what? Go to all of his shops and go and see what he's done. Learn from somebody of his caliber and his success so that you can create something powerful in your life. And uh, so, Gary, dude, any last words for anybody watching about you, your biz, the cocoa bean, the product, anything else you want to share? I don't think so. But thank you for you know setting this up and and being a loyal customer. You and your wife are amazing. So, well, really I I have uh, probably like an extra thirty pounds to show <laughs> for my loyalty. I'm no. That's what that's why I go to the gym. But I do love your cupcakes and probably eat more than I should. So anyway, well, Gary, thank you, man, and uh, thank you to your wife for letting you uh, sneak away tonight to be able to do this. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk again soon, my friend. But God All bless right, you. Okay. I'm gonna. I'll post this uh, on your Facebook, and I'll post this on uh, your Google Plus and stuff, and I'll, I'll I'll post this on Cocoa Bean if you're cool with that. And if you, you can take sure. it down if you want, but I'll I'll just get it out there so people can watch it and get a feel for you and what this thing is. But uh, God bless you, my friend. Thank you for being you and for doing what you do. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Kevin. See ya. Okay. All right. Peace.